Electricity without wires, not underground, no wires at all. Can you see it? Think about this. Every disastrous storm from the severe tornadoes out in the Midwest to the typhoon in the Philippines to Hurricane Sandy, they all end in massive power outages. That's the first problem to tackle. But a revolutionary concept could change everything we know and be a worldwide breakthrough. Gregory Reed is the director of the Electric Power Initiative at the University of Pittsburgh. Gregory, how does it work? Well, hi, Melissa. You're absolutely right. Uh, in the aftermath of every one of these natural disasters or whenever we have massive disturbances in our power network, we realize how dependent we are today in modern society on electricity. And so we, we need to do a better job of in, improving the resiliency of our electrical energy supply and our electric delivery. And, and so wireless technology is something that's really just beginning to start as, as a possible futuristic application of, of how we move electricity uh, you know, through, throughout our electrical networks. Uh, how it works is, is essentially by, by uh, magnetic induction, using magnetic fields uh, in the air to move electricity wirelessly from, from a transmitter to a receiver. Can you power a whole house, a whole building? Well, not, not exactly right now. A lot of the applications and, and the demonstrations that have been done so far really only have been able to move it, you know, several meters, maybe a little bit more to charge cell phones or maybe even laptop computers. Some of the research is, is developing more towards being able to charge an electric vehicle, for example. So right now, the, the power levels and the voltage levels are at very, very low capacities uh, there, as compared to how we use electricity today. Um, there are some amazing applications for this. Um, you talk about heart pumps that there are wires, if you have an electrical right. heart pump within your body, there are wires that are used that can cause infection, that can cause all kinds of problems, we can get rid of that. You spoke right. of laptops and cell phones, there's also cars, I mean there are military applications when you right. have robots, um, you know, that have gone out to defuse a bomb. A lot of times, um, you know, people working on them get hit by snipers because they're going out to deal with the battery situation. In this case, they could wirelessly recharge the robot out there. It, is it in use anywhere yet? Not, not in, in a lot of commercial pl practical applications. Again, a lot of what's being done right now is in the development and, and demonstration phases. Mm -hmm. I, but there I is a lot of promise to the technology, obviously. I mean, yeah. and, and as we look at, at how we, you know, build more resiliency into our grid, there are other options that are a little more practical right now. And, and some of that is, is to begin to go underground with our infrastructure and to use advances in direct current or DC technology and electronically controlled grids, uh, which I think is going to be much more practical and, and near term as opposed to, to looking at wireless, which I think, again, is, is a much more futuristic long term option that we need to pursue much more. One of the companies that's working on this is called Ytricity. Um, it right. works through magnetic waves. A lot of people are going to worry about the physical danger to this. Right. I mean, right. is there a danger to me as these waves are passing through my body? Not at the levels that we're talking about when we're just charging cell phones or in these medical applications or in what I would call residential or consumer or even, you know, commercial building type applications. When we talk about higher voltage, you know, utility level transmission and distribution of electricity, then we are talking about dangerous levels. And that's one of the problems of it right now. You know, some of the testing to date where they've been able to, to move as much as 3,000 watts of electricity through the wireless technology, that's, that's pretty impressive. But when you consider how much energy goes through a power transmission line, we're upwards of of a billion watts of electricity, one gigawatts over a single corridor. So we're many, many orders of magnitude away from the wireless technology, you know, moving in a direction to where we use it as, as bulk transmission or distribution delivery. Again, we have, we have better technologies today for that. What is the downside to this technology? Because I know when we think of, you know, power over wires, it's always storms taking down those wires. If it's underground, it's flooding. What is, what is the potential, you know, roadblock to this technology that would, you know, take it offline? 
Well, when we start to get to, again, higher capacity levels and higher voltage levels, it's really the safety involved in, in transmitting that much energy mm. through magnetic induction uh, through the airwaves. And, and also the, the, the problem with controlling it across the airwaves as well. That, that's a very difficult problem to solve. We're looking at the cost right now per mile on average of distributing power. Uh, $195,000 right. per mile on average overhead underground is a lot more expensive 571,000 per mile but you know I mean a lot of communities have decided to go with that because they're you right. don't have the same level of disruption what is I, I know it's difficult to estimate the cost at this point because it's such a new technology but in the long run what do you think it's on par with well I, I think it's probably uh you know, uh, qu quite a bit more than either of those options. Mm. I, I really couldn't give you an estimate uh, either at this point. Uh, I think it's it's too early to, to really determine what what the commercial costs would be for for given applications. But you're right about the increase in costs of, of underground technologies, and that's where as we start to move towards more of a DC infrastructure, mm -hmm. towards DC microgrids, we have a, a better benefit in terms of both reliability in operating underground, but also in terms of the cost. You know, today our, our, our grid is based on a legacy AC three-phase system. And, and most of the devices that we use as consumers in our businesses and our buildings and facilities actually operate on low voltage DC. Uh, our computers, our data centers. And so we have a real mismatch in our grid right, right. now between how we deliver electricity and yeah. how we use it. We keep yeah. plugging everything into a 120 volt AC legacy outlet. So as we go underground, DC has lighter infrastructure okay. and it's less expensive. So your $500,000 will come down significantly. Absolutely, uh, this is the future, we gotta go. Thank you so much, Gregory Reed, we appreciate it. You're welcome, my pleasure, Melissa. So